Good morning, stamping friends. This is Angie with Too Cool Stamping. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here with our live class this week. Thank you for joining me. I know we had a rescheduled time, so I appreciate you joining me a little bit later this week. Uh, typically, we do this every Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and I hope you can join me each week as we present a live class. So for this week's class, we're going to focus on the really popular Celebrate Sunflower stamp set, and the bundle includes the Celebrate or the Sunflower dies. So these dies are awesome. They not only cut out the sunflower, but they also have an outline, intricate outline image that they can die cut. And that is really awesome. Now we're not gonna be using any of the die cuts, but I did wanna show you what that looked like. This is just a tone on tone. So, so pretty. This is one of the cards from my In Color Club. And I love how all those layers come together with the different uh, centers of the sunflowers as well. So I wanted to show you that a little bit before we got started, just because we're not using a lot of those dies right now for this class. I wanted to make this class really simple and also a lot of coloring. So um, if you were joining us last week, we did the Jar of Flowers stamp set, and that's part of the same suite. And you can find that it's the Flowers for Every Season suite. It's on page 10 and 11 of the annual catalog and so last week we focused on the jar of flowers and then this week the celebrate sunflowers so really really pretty sweet I love all of the different products that go with it as well especially the designer series paper so this week instead of using the designer series paper that goes with the suite we're actually going to be using the in good taste designer series paper as well as the ornate garden so you'll see those in a minute. Um, before I get started with the actual class, I wanted to remind you that the holiday uh, catalog, it's called the August to December mini catalog, is now available. If you would like a copy and you're not already relate, uh, have a relationship with another demonstrator, I would be happy to send you one. Simply, uh, you can just email me. Uh, there's an email link at twocoolstamping.com and you can go there and request one. Just send me your address and I can get one out to you. Or you can just direct message me on Facebook and just give me your contact information that way. I'll have an another batch going out on Monday, so if you want one of those, then just let me know and I'll be happy to get that in the mail. Okay, let's get started with our class. So our, I wanted to um, also mention that the, the projects that we're doing are this week that they're part of my stamp and share event my stamp and share event is a team event that I do uh, for all of my team members right now it's via zoom as many people are very familiar with right now but I do put together a make and take kit every month for for my team members it's just five dollars for the kit they get four cards typically uh, kind of depends on what projects are working on but um, but today's projects are an example of the kit. Several of the cards are example of the kit that you get when you are a team member for Too Cool Stamping. And um, it's just a $5 class when you're a team member, plus shipping if you're not here in the local uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana area. So I wanted to kind of share that. I don't usually do that, but it's kind of fun. You can see what we're gonna be working on. And our next event is coming up on Monday. So this is a sneak peek for my team members as well. Okay, let's get started with our first card. First of all, we're gonna start with a cr piece of crumb cake cardstock, just the traditional five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then we're going to layer that with another piece of crumb cake that I've already textured with the Tasteful Textile Embossing Folder. I love this folder. This is such, it's just kind of a, a classic that goes with everything. Just a little bit of subtle texture. And we'll add that. I love to use this, the new seal adhesive with textured paper because it secures it really well. So there's the background. And 
Then we'll start working on the focal point. First of all, I have a piece here of the uh, Ornate Garden Designer Series paper. So pretty on the back, but we're gonna use this gold side. <clears throat> and we're going to sponge some color on that. And we're gonna sponge soft suede that goes really well with the crumb cake. So I'm gonna go over here. Hopefully you're still in, in the camera. And I apologize, it's probably gonna make the the camera shake a little bit because of all of the movement, but hang on there. So we're just taking, and I cut up one of the sponges. So normally they're, you know, a round circle, and I usually cut the sponge up into like six pieces of pie, pie shapes. So I'm just sponging that on. You can make it kind of a mottled look or I'm actually putting quite a bit of color on there to give it kind of an even tone. All right, so there is our background piece, so pretty. We're getting our inky fingers right off the bat, right? That just means you're getting creative. All right, we're gonna layer that on a piece of um, Soft suede. This is a three by four piece, and so this is going to be a uh, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I'll have all the measurements later on today in the details of my, both my Facebook post and my YouTube description as well. Which, by the way, if you're watching this on Facebook and would like to see my full collection of videos, you can go to my YouTube channel which is too cool stamping and, um, and just find all my videos there. All right, so now we're going to, I'm gonna fix my, sorry, didn't mean to put my hand right there in the camera, but my camera is drooping again. I need to figure out what the problem with that is. Because before we're done, it's like we're gonna be pointed to the, to the wall instead of <laughs> my, workspace here. Okay, so next let's start stamping with the Celebrate Sunflowers. We're going to use Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, and we're going to stamp with a small sunflower image, and I'm going to do two pieces here, two images on just some scrap Whisper White. And we're gonna color that in with some Stampin' Blends markers. Now I have to tell you, you may notice when I'm coloring that I, I colored a lot of sunflowers <laughs> in the past few days. And so uh, I'm running out of ink. <laughs> so just in time for the, for the demonstration on my live video. But I am starting with Dark Daffodil. So actually I'm not running out of ink so much as I the nib of my brush tip end is starting to get really soft and so it's hard to color but in the lines a little bit. But I do still like to color with that brush tip end because it, it just puts down a lot of color very quickly. So we're just gonna do that really fast. Again, that was Dark Daffodil. And then I'm gonna take some light is it light? No, dark mango melody, again with the brush tip end. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of that on kind of the part that's closer to the center of the inside of the flower there for some shading. So if you've been following my videos, you've noticed that lately I have been not just using light and dark daffodil or light and dark mel uh, mango melody. I kind of combine them to make a little bit different um, different colors. It just gives a little bit different of a tone to it, just a tiny bit. All right, then I have light old olive, which kind of is just like pear pizzazz. And we'll color that very quickly. And then the center, I'm going to color that with dark soft suede. So it's going to match that background color. So you're gonna do that with both of the sunflowers. 
And then you're gonna use your sunflower dyes to cut that out. Now, if you are getting this kit and you don't have the sunflower dyes, you can just fussy cut, and then you'll have your two sunflowers. All right, next, we're gonna work on the sentiment. Oh, I did have another little die cut here. This is in gold foil, and there's some pieces right here that make that cute little sprig. So that will go on, on our card as well. And then I have a piece here that is cut with the Tasteful Touches dies. And we'll stamp that with soft suede. And then we'll assemble everything. I love this stamp set. Not only does it have really pretty floor, you know, sunflower floral images, but it also has some very nice sentiments as well really pretty sentiments, the fonts are pretty, and um, just kind of different ones. Congratulations on reaching a whole new level of wonderful, let's celebrate you, thanks a bunch, and then this one, know that you are loved. So a little bit different than we are used to, but I adore it. All right, let's start to assemble this. First, we're gonna put some linen thread. This is actually the braided, braided trim can't remember the official name. Linen braided trim, I'm thinking. So we're just gonna tie this in a double knot. And we'll trim that up. And actually for this, I like to fray the edges just to give it a little bit more texture and fun a little more detail, and I'm gonna push that clear over to the side. Let's bring it down just a bit. And then we're gonna start adding all of our background. Okay, so next I'm gonna add this piece with the seal adhesive. You could pop this up. Uh, I, I get a little worried that if you have too much popped up, then it gets too thick for the post office for their liking. So I'm just gonna add some seal here. And then we're gonna put this sentiment here at the bottom, again, with some seal. And then we'll pop up these, um, let's put our little sprig first. Just gonna put just a little dab. A little dab will do ya. Anyone know that? Was that really? Okay, truly, that's not showing my age. That's That was way before my time, but I remember my grandma. Who knows it? Who knows what it's from? So just a few dimensionals here to pop that up. I'm gonna put the first one down here. And then another one. Let's see how I wanna do this. We'll overlap it just a bit. And then maybe just a little bit of the seal adhesive there where the overlap's gonna be. So we'll just add that. Um, how about right there? Did I do it again? I did this a couple weeks ago. I forgot to take the backing off. We're not having that kind of a day. I don't know if you saw that video, but it was like everything was going wrong. All right, and then we're gonna finish up by adding just a few of the gilded gems. These are so shiny and pretty, little metallic pieces here. So I'm just gonna add a couple over here just to kind of balance out that that gold uh, sprig right there. So there's our first card. And like I said, this is one of the cards that you can get in the, um, the class kit for this week. Using the host code, you do have to have a minimum $35 order. You can order at twocoolstamping.com and use that host code PNEACCQY. 
Uh, if you're a part of my Too Cool team, this is one of the cards we'll be making during our make and take on Monday. All right. Let's clean up some of my stuff here and we'll go on to the next card. So the next card's going to start with the, with Old Olive. I'm sorry, I'm gonna move this again. Ugh, this, I really wish that I could figure out why my camera keeps, it's like, it just keeps moving down, down, down. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is Old Olive for your card base. Again, I'm gonna use some ornate garden designer series paper, and this time it is the old olive with a little gold pattern, so I love that. This is five and a quarter by two. And we'll add that right down the side here. All right, and we'll set that aside. Then we're gonna work on the focal point. This time we're gonna use the large sunflower. And we're gonna ink that with some early espresso. When it's a larger stamp, I like to just hold it and ink it from the top. All right. And we're just gonna stamp right in the center. Let's go like this. So pretty. And then we're gonna do a little bit of masking. I wanted to add a little leaf at the side but I don't wanna overlap that. So I've already stamped just on a piece of copy paper and I've started cutting out some of the edge. I didn't need the whole thing, so I didn't cut the whole thing out. Let's see, it looks like I might need to cut just a little bit more out. So when you are making a little mask, you're just gonna stamp on scrap paper. And then when you cut it out, you wanna cut right on the line. So you don't wanna leave a little border like you might if you're cutting out an image to use on your project. You wanna cut right on that line because you want the ink to go right up to the image. All right, so I'm gonna, where was it? Right there. I'm gonna put that right over it. And again, when you lay that down, you want to go just inside of the ink line. That way you're, you know that you are gonna have the ink go right up to the edge. So again, I'm gonna open up my early espresso and I'm going to stamp one down here and then another one right beside. So see how easy that goes together and then we can just color that and it's going to look beautiful. So we'll start by coloring with some light old olive. And we're gonna use the same color scheme basically that we did on the previous card. So light old olive for the leaves. Uh, we are gonna change the center to be crumb cake. It really wouldn't matter. You could use soft suede on this one as well. I just wanted a little bit of crumb cake. And then our two yellows are dark daffodil. And I'm just gonna do this super fast, so not getting it completely within the lines. It's a lot of coloring. Do you guys like using Stampin' Blends? I know we had some a lot of coloring last week, but this is the perfect suite if you like to color, and especially if you like yellow. But just because they're sunflowers, and sunflowers are normally yellow, orangey, that type of thing, um, you can use a variety of colors, and I did experiment with that just a little bit, which you'll see on a couple of the cards that we'll be doing in a minute. 
Um, these sunflowers kind of look like Gerber daisies to me. I know they're not exactly, but they kind of look like that. So I felt like I could color them kind of like a Gerber daisy. I don't know my flowers, so you'll have to forgive me. All right, that is some really fast, fast coloring. And then again, we're gonna add some dark mango melody just to shade that in just a little bit. So you might take a little more time than I'm doing right now. I'm just adding this to be very quick. But even quick, I think it looks pretty good. Just need a little variation of color there. All right, that looks so cool with the masking, don't you think? I love that. All right, we're gonna layer that. That's a three and a half square of Whisper White, and we're gonna layer that onto I'll tell you in a second, because I can't remember. Looks like a three and three quarter. No, three and five eighths, it looks like. And that's Mossy Meadow. So that's gonna go right here on our card. So let's put a ton of dimensionals to pop that up a little bit. Whoops, pulled the whole thing off. All right. All right, I think we have them all now. We'll stick that right on there and then we'll add a sentiment on the bottom. We just have a little um, three quarter inch strip. We're gonna have a sentiment in Mossy Meadow this time. It says, let's celebrate you. And we'll just add a little fish tail banner cut at the end here. You go up the center and then corner to center, corner to center. And we'll add that right to the bottom with some snail adhesive. So I'm gonna put that flush to the edge. And then we need to add just a couple of elements to give it a finished look. So I have some linen thread that I have tied into a double bow. And we're gonna add that with a little glue dot. So I'm just gonna add that right to the glue dot, pinch it together, and then add that over the leaves. And we'll finish up with a little rhinestone that we're going to add some color to. We're gonna use our soft suede and you wanna use the bullet tip end, and I'm just gonna gently add some color to that. The soft suede, actually, it's kind of brownish, but it also has kind of a golden look to it. So I really liked that golden look. Okay, so there is our second card. Again, this is part of the five card class, as well as um, the make and takes that we're doing with my Two Cool Stampers team on Monday. All right, let's move on to the next card. Now this one, we're gonna kind of get adventurous and try some different colors. So we'll start out with a rich Razzleberry card base. And this time we're gonna use just a one inch strip of the wood grain paper from the In Good Taste designer series paper. I love that pack. It's a great big pack. It has 24 sheets and the wood grain looks fantastic with the sunflower. So it's a perfect pairing in my mind. So this is, oh, I completely did this differently than I was going to. <laughs> Let's see if I can fix it. I was going to make it a horizontal card and that's not where I wanted it. That seal really sticks really well, but let's see. Hey, you know what? That did not even affect it. I can't even believe that. That was so sticky. All right, let's try it this way. I wanna put it on the edge instead of the folded edge. There we go. That's where I wanted it. I wanted a horizontal look. Okay, next, 
We're gonna set this one aside. I have to fix this again. What is going on? <laughs> it just doesn't want to stay up. If anybody has any tips, I just don't even know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna make you seasick. Okay. Um, let, this time we're going to use the, uh, I need to clean my large stamp here, my large sunflower. We're going to use the Simply Chamois, which is a must have on your stamping in your, for your stamping area. Cause it's just so awesome for cleaning. And we're going to use Memento ink this time. So we'll ink that up. And we're gonna add one flower. Let's see, let's go right here. And then we'll do another one. Over here in the corner. And then we're gonna do another one up at the top. like I need to get some ink into my ink pad. So just a little bit there up at the top and then we're gonna add a sentiment, this time in gray granite. And we'll add that right at the top here. And then we'll do some coloring for these sunflowers. And like I mentioned, I kind of felt like you could make them into Gerber daisies And so I am going to use, this is Rich Razzleberry. And I'm gonna use that color to color in this one. I'm just gonna do part of it so that we don't get too hung up on coloring. So you color the whole thing in light and then you can go through and use the dark right over some of the shaded areas. Then you can go back with the light bullet tip end and just, if you go right over the edge of the dark, just kind of blends out that dark color. So you're gonna do that with all of that flower. You'll add the soft suede for the inside again. And you could do more shading on that. You could do a light soft suede with dark. And then for the other two, I'm gonna use Calypso Coral. And again, start with the light. And notice how if you use the brushed up end, it really gets in that, the, the tips of those petals very well. So we're just gonna do a partial coloring. I'll show you what I have a finished one you can see in a minute. So then we'll take the dark Calypso Coral Just add a little shading and then the light with the bullet tip end just to kind of blend between the darker and light. And if you do it really fast, it's kind of a mottled look, but it's very watercolory to me. If you take some time, you can actually make it smooth it out and make it very realistic looking. Okay, so here is just an example. Let me show you the finished look. So this is our Rich Razzleberry and Calypso Coral and then a little Calypso Coral up here. I love how those turned out and I love those colors together as well. All right, let's layer that. This is a uh, four and three quarter by three and a quarter, I believe. Again, I'm gonna have all of the 
measurements, the dimensions of everything in the details later today. They'll also, I'll also have descriptions of all of these cards and step-by-step -step instructions on my blog. We're gonna layer that onto some gray granite. So pretty. So here's how it's coming together. Before we put that on, let's see. I wanted to put a little bit of ribbon on here. So I have some white crinkle seam binding and I'm just gonna add that around this layer and I'll tie it in a knot. I'm seeing some hearts, I love that. Okay, and this one, I usually tie things in knots and you know, honestly, it's just because I'm kinda lazy and I know how people don't like to tie ribbons. I don't really like to tie ribbons that much either but this crinkle seam binding is pretty uh, forgiving, I guess. You can kind of maneuver it around and it's, it'll lay pretty well. So, and if you can see, I'm tying it upside down for some reason, for me, the way I tie them, it helps if I tie them upside down. That makes it so that the tails are hanging down. <laughs> so everyone has their little trick on how they do it. So I'm gonna cut the tails off a little bit. And we'll just move that over just a smidgen. Mm, nope, I'm liking it over on this side better. All right, now we'll pop that up with some dimensionals. I'm having this problem. I've never really had this problem. Do you see how it's taking the backing off as well? Have you guys ever had that happen? I've never had that. Quite a few dimensionals again. I'm getting ink all over my hands today between the sponging and sticking my fingers right in the ink pad. Just means I'm getting creative, must be doing a good job. All right, we're gonna add that to this background. Ooh, I just love those colors. I thought they look really pretty together. All right, so there is our third card, and this will be included in our five card kit that you can get with the host code when you place an order of $35 or more. Um, let me show you. This is not gonna be in the make and take for my team, but our alternate card here, our two cool version, which I did in a vertical format, and I did the same kind of yellow uh, the daffodil and mango combination. I kept the gray granite and I this time I tied the linen braided trim around that and used this, it was the same color of paper actually. It does look a little different though, but the background is the early espresso. So this is the card that we'll be doing as a make and take for my team event on Monday but you will also get this bonus card in that five card class kit if you place your $35 order with the host code. Okay, and let me uh, let you know that that is that will be available until August 12th, I believe. Typically, I have my class kits available until a Tuesday, but I'm gonna uh, extend that until Wednesday just because we're running a little bit behind since we had our rescheduled event uh, this morning. So you'll have until August 12th in order to earn that kit. All right, let me clear off some spots here because I have a really cool, a too cool card to show you for the last card. Hope, hopefully you guys will love it. All right. This one has a lot of different kinds of pieces to it. It is a fancy fold card for sure. So our base is gonna be Whoops, did I not get the, hold on, I have to go get one more thing that I forgot to bring over. Okay, sorry, this was a very essential piece, so I needed to make sure that I had it. Um, okay, I apologize. 
this is really getting ridiculous, but I have got to move this up. My camera is like, it starts to be pointing at a 45 degree angle. Okay, we're gonna move it around again. Um, okay, so this one has a two part card base. It starts with a quarter sheet of the Misty Moonlight. So that is a five and a half by four and a quarter. And then you're gonna have another piece here that is the full length of a piece of cardstock, 11 inches by four. And then we're gonna score it in four places. So we're gonna score it at the two inch mark, the three and three quarter inch mark, the seven and one quarter inch mark, and the nine inch mark. Again, I'll have all of these measurements on my uh, details later today in the description for the video, as well as um, you'll be able to see the full project on my blog later this week. Okay, so this is a second part here. So let's start building this. What is it? How do we put it together? We're gonna start with a little decoration. So here's another couple of pieces of the In Good Taste Designer Series paper. They're just one by four inch strips. And we're gonna add those to the edges of this card base. Now I had never seen this particular style of card until I received one as a swap from Susie Wood and it was just so, so cute. I couldn't wait to try it. Okay, next, we're gonna have this piece that we've already scored and we're gonna make kind of a double Z fold. So we wanna make sure that we're gonna use our bone folder and score all those creases so that our card's going to lay as flat as possible. So, so this is gonna be kind of a little gate fold that opens up like so. We're gonna add a little piece of white. This'll be, um, you can stamp on this before you put it in there. Maybe put a little sunflower on there or another sentiment. I'm just gonna add it in here, but this will be a nice place to write a message. And this is three and three quarter by three and a quarter. And then we're gonna use, since this is kind of a two piece card, we're gonna use the Stamp and Seal Plus for this one. Now the Stamp and Seal and Stamp and Seal Plus, they're both in the same case. And so they're interchangeable. They both have refills, obviously. You can take those apart. And they're super easy to take apart. You just kind of squeeze and they come apart and then pop them back together. The thing about the Stampin' Seal Plus is that it is extra, extra strong. So if you remember Fast Fuse a few years ago, this is like that. This is very similar to Tear and Tape. It's what you wanna use if you are putting together 3D projects or boxes or cards like this that might have some extra pull. As you're pulling this, you don't want that second piece to come away from the base. So I'm gonna add stamp and seal plus to that. And I want to show you, I don't know if it'll pick it up here, but you can actually see little sections. It's like perforated every 16th of an inch. So it's really easy, can, there you go, maybe you can see it there so that it really comes um, before like fast fuse, if you didn't check it, which means like pull it off to the side, you'd have a long stringy piece sometimes, almost like mozzarella. <laughs> and this actually, because it's pre-perforated, it cuts away really nicely. So you're not gonna have a lot of uh, problems with it. All right, so we're gonna add this. This is four inches wide, so it's the same width as our designer series paper. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. Whoops. Ah! I'm trying to do it without having, without looking right over it because the camera is right there. Okay, there we go. So there's our little gatefold. Then we're gonna start decorating the front of it. So we're gonna start with a three and a half inch square piece of 
Whisper White. And we're going to, I need to clean my little stamp here. We're gonna use it in gray granite this time. If I can find it, here we go. So I'm just gonna stamp randomly. all over that piece, just like that. Then again, we're gonna color in those pieces. So this time I'm gonna use just some lighter colors generally. So we have light daffodil. So again, I'm just gonna color one of these just to give you an idea of how they're gonna look. And then we'll show you what it looks like on the finished. So there is that basic. And then this time we're gonna use light mango melody. So before we used both dark, now we're using both light. Just a little bit of shading there. So just a little Texture. We're going to use soft sea foam for the leaves this time. Kind of a more grayed out um, look on these flowers. And this one is dark gray granite. So I bet these would be really pretty with misty moonlight. I like the idea of having the uh, kind of the contrast of the yellow against the blue. So you can do that to all of your different sunflowers there. And then we're gonna add that to a mat of gray granite. So this is a three and three quarter inch square of gray granite. So we're gonna pretend like that's all colored. You'll see a finished version in a minute. And then we're going to add this to the front. So again, we're going to use that seal plus to add that. And I'm going to just add a couple of strips here to the front. That's going to give it a nice secure hold. You're only going to do it on the one side, close it down, and then center that panel right on there. So now we have this cute little Z fold with a fun little, um, a little panel on the gate. So I love that. We're going to finish that up with a little sentiment. So I'm going to use the pick, uh, lovely label pick a punch. Have you guys used this yet? This is so fun. So there's two different styles of ends here. So I don't know if you can see very well, but there's like a flat end with a little decorative around it and then more of a curly end, a scalloped end, if you will. And you pick the sizes that you want to punch. So you, can, you have different um, tracks here, different grooves for different sizes. So you have one for a half inch, one for a three quarter inch, and then another one for a one inch. So I've already put, uh, I've already cut a soft suede three quarter inch strip. And I believe that it is three and three quarter long for this particular project. Again, I'll have all the measurements uh, on, in the description, but it's just gonna slide, you pick which end that you want. And I'm gonna pick the scalloped end. You're gonna put it right in that track. And just a tip, when you're cutting, you wanna cut just a hair, just the teeniest, tiniest bit smaller than three quarter. If you cut exactly at three quarter or whatever measurement you want to put in the track, if you, if you have just a little bit more or right at, then it doesn't fit really nicely in that groove and move. See, this one just actually moves really freely. That's what you want. In particular for these um, different punches, I've noticed if you don't have it uh, able to fit right in that track, you can kind of notice that you won't get a symmetrical punch on the end. So that's really key to have that 
um, just a slight, um, just a little bit narrower than your whatever one inch or three quarter inch or whatever you're putting in there in the track so that it moves freely. Then once you do that, push it all the way far as far back as you can. And sometimes I like to just push down with one finger and then kind of wiggle it. Make sure that it's nicely in that track before you make that punch. And then you have this really pretty end. Now, another way that you can do it, because um, some people are having trouble making sure that that is in that track. And if it's not in the track, you're gonna have something that's a little bit whopper jawed. You can also hold it in place, come around here and check. Does it look lined up? Is it nice and flush against this end? Does it look like it's gonna be good? Or is it looking, you know, sometimes if it's a little bit whopper jawed, you can, well, it's gonna go in there good every time, but you can see if it's like whopper jawed like that, then you wouldn't want to, to punch it yet. So put it nicely in the track and then punch it again. And here is our little piece that we're going to stamp on. All right. This time we're gonna stamp in Misty Moonlight. And our sentiment is thanks a bunch. Just gonna add that right on top. And then we're gonna add this with some dimensionals. So I want this to hang off just a little bit so we don't want dimensionals to be too far over. So I'm just gonna flip this a 180 flip so I kind of know how far to put the dimensionals. And then we'll add that to the front. Again, this is all gonna be colored. I'll show you in a minute the full effect. We're gonna add a little piece of the linen trim again linen thread, sorry, I'm getting confused between the braided linen trim and the linen thread. So again, pop that on the glue dot, pinch it, and we're just gonna put that right up here. And then one little accent, I wanna pull that yellow. I'm gonna have obviously yellow all the way around here. So I'm gonna use some in-color dots. And I wanna give you a tip about the in-color dots. Again, we've had a few people um, that have said that if, the, if you're kind of poking at it to get it off of the sheet, it can separate from the, the clear dome part of the gem might separate from the bottom color part. It's like a circle of color with a clear dome over the top of it. So to get around that and make sure that you don't have that happen to you, use a piercing mat and then I, you, you could use your take your pick tool. I have a little paper piercer. You could also just use your scissors if you wanted to. A lot of people pick them up that way. But when you do pick it up, push down on that plastic so that you can get underneath your gem and scoop it up like a spatula. That's my, my best tip for that. So we're just gonna add one, just a little pop of yellow color. Let's show you what it really looks like with all the color because it really looks fantastic. So I love that color combination and that little yellow bumblebee color really, really goes nicely with those other yellows. So what do you think of that card? I don't know what it's called, a double Z gatefold. That's what I'm gonna call it, double Z gatefold card. So again, that is a card that I learned from a swap that I got from Susie Wood. I'll show you hers. This was her swap card and she used the gingham. It's all in bumblebee colors. And I love that she didn't even stand, or she didn't even color the sunflowers. She just used the outline. You could do that as well. That makes it really, really easy. And then hers just opens up. So I love that idea. Thank you, Susie Wood, for sending that cool swap to me so that I could try it out myself. Don't disconnect now. <laughs> I see that it's disconnecting and reconnecting. So our five card class is going to have all of these cards in it. You'll get all the parts and pieces to create all of these. You just need the Celebrate Sunflower stamp set to complete it. You don't need to have the die cuts, the sunflower dies, unless you want to. I highly recommend getting them because you're gonna want to try them. 
because they're just cool. And let me show you my, did I move it? Oh, I don't know what I did with it. I had, a, I had an example earlier of what they look like and I don't know what happened to them. But anyway, once it gets messy on your desk, you can't find anything. Uh, so anyway, you can get your five card class and um, definitely need some Stampin' Blends or some other kind of coloring. You can color with an ink pad or Stampin' Write markers, but Stampin' Blends, again, the best, the best, the best. So uh, you'll get all the parts and pieces, all the embellishments, and um, I will have instructions this time. I know most times I don't have a PDF, but because we have kind of a more complicated card, I'm gonna have instructions. To earn that class kit for free, all you need to do is place an order with me at twocoolstamping.com. Just go there, click on the Shop Now link, and place your order. You'll get to experience the brand new online store, which is really, really cool and awesome. There's a wish list feature there that you can um, put together some different lists of things that you like, and it'll save those for future purchase, so that's kind of fun. So be sure to try that out. Um, you'll need a minimum $35 order in order to get that kit. Uh, and you have until next Wednesday, August the 12th, 2020, to place that order. I'll send all the kits out the following Saturday in the mail, and you'll be able to create these cards along with the video. Um, if you are part of my Too Cool team, we will be having our Stamp and Share event on Monday, and we're gonna be making these same cards. We're only doing four of the cards, but these are the four cards that we'll be doing for our make and take event. So this is kind of a little sneak peek for you and you also get a chance to see how they're put together. And um, if you've ever thought about being a part of my Too Cool team, I would love to have you on my team. It's just $99 for the starter kit and you get to choose and select $125 worth of products for just $99, free shipping on that. And then you're part of my Too Cool team and you get to enjoy a 20% discount on all of your future orders. So every month our team gets together, currently online, but every month uh, if you want, there's an optional make and take kit with all of the parts and pieces, just like I put together for my live class kits. And um, so you can get that for just $5 when you're on my team, um, when you are a part of the Stamp and Share event. Uh, it is $8 for shipping if you need it shipped to you, or it's $5 if you want to pick it up here in the Fort Wayne, Indiana area. Um, but that's kind of a little, a fun little thing that we do as a team. And uh, you also have some opportunities for prizes, and you get a little table gift. Lots of fun stuff that go along with my team events. But I wanted to give you a snapshot of some of the things that we do. Again, you'll get all five of these cards when you place that order by next Wednesday, August 12th with the host code. I'll have all the information in the description later on today and also on my blog at twocoolstamping.com. All right, everybody, thank you so much for spending some time with me and getting creative today. I hope that you can join me each week on Thursdays at 9 a.m. Eastern time for our live class. Until then, this is Angie with Too Cool Stamping. See you later, bye-bye.